Did you ever hear why Don and I got along so well? You know? I mean, he's heard it. I, I think you should share that story. I think it's a very important story. We went to the States on our honeymoon, and Donna's grandfather had been chief of police of uh, Windsor, and he had several revolvers, and Donna had a hold, got a hold of one. And when she knew we were going to the States on her honeymoon, she thought she should take one with her, the States is a dangerous area. We got to the Grand Canyon, and at that time, and I still think you can do it, you can ride on the mules, on the mule back, and you can ride to the bottom of the canyon, and then you can come back up. And uh, so I said to Donnie, would you like to go down on the, grand, on the mule to, to the, grand, the bottom of the Grand Canyon? She said, yeah. So she had her little bag and she took it and she was ahead of me and uh, I followed her down and we got a little piece down and the darn old mule, my mule worked good and her mule didn't work worth a darn and uh, uh, it kind of bucked a bit and Donna said that's one and she got over halfway down and the old mule bucked again and scared her and she it didn't buck her off, but it, it scared her. And she said, "That's two. And we got down to the uh, to the bottom, and it it almost bucked her off. And she got off and took this revolver out of the out of her little bag and shot the mule dead. And there were all these people around, and I come up to where she was and I said, you shouldn't have done that, Donna. She said, that's one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wrap right there, man. <laughs> that's enough to keep anybody in order. When I heard that the first time, it was like, oh, I said, what? She did what? <laughs> <laughs> he had me believing it all the way. I was on the edge of my seat like this. start with menacing. Where, tell me about menacing, the origins of menacing. When, when the white man came, uh, this was totally bush, and it was decided by those that be, they would cut a road from uh, Barrie to Collingwood. Okay. Menacing finally were given, there were enough farms were on, were settled, that menacing had to have a name and had to have a post office. Right. This is the first official. A fellow by the name of Laird was just east of the village, and he had a, probably a better education than most people, and uh, they appointed him uh, postmaster, which was a, probably a wise decision. So the next thing they knew, they had to have a name. And he thought Laird would be a nice name. <laughs> I suppose so. And his, uh, he suggested it to the neighbors, and the neighbors thought that much of it. They got a petition up, and uh, they didn't want Laird. And one of them knew a bit of Ojibwe, and he suggested the, uh, the name menacing be given, and it meant that it was a, a, an island. At one time, there was an Indian village on the uh, eastern slope of this plateau, and there was a village there. And uh, uh, 
They're, they had access within half a mile of the Willow Creek, and of course, most of their transportation was by water. Mm. The, the first settler was here about, I, I just don't know exactly, but near 10 years before he had any... Uh, neighbors or anything Yeah, like that, he had eh? any neighbors around. Yeah. Uh, Alan, the thing that I'm curious about is all this farmland in and around Minasing. I yes. think at one time you shared with me that that land was all trees. It was. Yes. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, but they didn't have chainsaws back in that day. <laughs> they had cross cuts. Yeah. And they took down all of these fields yeah. by hand with cross cuts. That's correct. And an axe. And an axe. But how would they manage to deal with the roots and the stumps and... Okay, the hardwood, uh, which is, uh, we call it hardwood, any like those maple trees, yep. uh, they were hardwood. The spruce here were were softwood and pine. Right. And the pine uh, didn't uh, rot out near as quick as as a, as a hardwood. A hardwood would sort of, with a bit of help, uh, by burning, etc., etc. Oh, et okay. Uh, they could get rid of the hardwood stumps in five, six years. Right on. But a pine stump would could stay there for fifty years. Really? Eh? Yeah. That's unbelievable. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah. And who defined who got what land? Oh, well, like the I government. Know, well, the was, government did. Yeah. Way back in the day. Yeah. If, if you were a soldier, a private, and I can appreciate that. Uh, you, you'd get a hundred acres if you were uh, an, had been an officer, and they called you uh, 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 your half duty. You could be called up, and uh, you got maybe six, seven hundred acres, wow. maybe a thousand acres. Really? So the other thing I, I'm kind of curious to know a little bit about is your family's history in the area, because okay. I know that the road. Uh, George Johnston yeah. was actually well, your father, yeah. named after your father, correct? Uh, my great-grandfather came over from Ireland, right, and also his wife, and I don't believe they met until they met in Kingston, Ontario, uh, and uh, the great-grandfather the, the great was uh, a stonemason. And he went to Kingston first, or you know, everybody knows about the limestone in Kingston. And I, I'm not sure how long he was there, but they had two children or three children. And he heard about uh, uh, them building Barry Jail. And uh, of course, it wasn't so much limestone as, as uh, a stronger stone mm -hmm. and he came to Barry he heard there were two or three years work here and he came to, to Barry and they brought the, uh, the stone down from near Aurelia mm -hmm. out of the uh, quarries up there and uh, they brought them down by barge from uh, by, by Lake Simcoe oh yeah and, and uh, then hauled them up there, there were horses and that in very time, but they would be cut into blocks before they ever were brought here. And and, and your dad came down then? No, my 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 great grandfather. Oh, your great grandfather. Sorry, yes. And he came down with two two sons, and I think he believed he had three sons when he was in Barry, and I gave him five boys. And I think he tried to make stone masons out of them, and some became contractors. And, but my grandfather and and the oldest son, John, uh, elected to come to Minasing and take up land. Now, when you took up land, you had to cut 66 feet across the front of your property. Right. And you had to build a, a, a log house and clear so much land before you could accept your, get a clear deed for ah, it. Ah, okay, got it. was it. the only way they could do it. Wow. It was to, 
you had to have an incentive. Here. Right, right. And, uh, and my grandfather evidently was a fairly good axeman, so I've heard. He, he gave a bit more money. He, his farm was mostly out of the flats, and he gave $600. And it, the land had belonged to a, a, a soldier. He'd never seen the land, hmm. but would accept $600 right. for his rights. Right. So yeah. what year would that have been? That was in 1864, I believe. I'm pretty sure that was the year he came to Minnesota. I came to this world in 1964. <laughs> 100 years later. 100 years later. Thank you.